Good evening. You are watching a live edition of InfoWars Nightly News. I am David Ortiz, and it is Tuesday, the 12th of February of 2013. Now, the top story as of right now is fugitive Christopher Dorner. It seems that local law enforcement authorities in Big Bear, California, seem to be surrounding him. And uh, news is still incoming right now. They surrounded him in a cabin in the Big Bear area in Big Bear, California. Our very own Alex Jones wants to comment on the matter. Alex. Absolutely, David. We've got a lot of breaking news here. But if you read his manifesto, it's like he went to Infowars.com and then responded to it and disagreed with everything. Worshipping Hillary Clinton, worshipping Obama, worshipping Biden, worshipping taking the citizens' guns. And he's only mad he was kicked out of his cult because he saw a cop beat somebody up, he claims he goes and kills cops' daughters. I don't call that a vigilante or a hero. I call that scum. And more and more, there are witnesses that have seen him shooting and doing things. It looks like he is the guy behind all this. It's still alleged. But two hours ago, about an hour into this crisis, when this all started and they surrounded uh, the cabin he was reportedly in, and he had this big shootout and there was video of it, I predicted... Uh, well, quite frankly, I said, what do you think is going to happen? And uh, Marcos Morales said, I bet they burn him up like Waco. And I said, that's right. And I'm shooting a video right now on that because the default is to burn them up. When somebody's killed cops, they burn them up and say, oh, they burned themselves up at Waco with a bunch of little kids inside. They could have picked Koresh up in town any time. They wanted a PR stunt. Uh, they tried to burn out Randy Weaver, but the news media was there and didn't follow orders to get back. And they saw a helicopter with a bladder, a controlled bucket that you can remote control at the bottom of the helicopter to open up and dump gasoline. Then they just simply shoot a flare into it. This is the real handbook. You burn people out. If they ever try to gun confiscate and start a civil war, they're going to burn gun owners out. That's why you can't wait at your house. That said, I think what has happened here and what he's alleged to have done has been disgraceful. I think it shows how sick the culture is and, and, and how successful the divide and conquer has been that the establishment, the foreign banks that have occupied our country, that a lot of people, even CBS News, ABC News Report, are saying he's a rock star. They're saying he's a hero. Uh, even if he did it or not, they think he did. They're saying kill more cops. Random cops. The average cop is a good person. I've met hundreds of them. Thousands of them are listeners. They call in all the time. I've had police help change tires, help me when I've had a wreck. You don't just randomly go kill cops. It's one thing if you went and killed some cop, did something wrong to him. That'd be bad enough uh, outside of the you know, law, unless you're defending yourself. You don't have a right to do that. But just to kill somebody's daughter. So people need to understand, though, we know what we're talking about. And we're going to play this video in a moment and then let you get back to the news. And we'll cover this tomorrow on the radio. But I shot this video two hours ago. It's time stamped. And two, sub uh, two subsequent videos after that. Uh, but I shot a fourth video just minutes before we went live, and I threw on my sports jacket and stuff and came in here right out there in the control room because uh, I was on, checking the YouTube video to make sure that it had been posted at InfoWars.com. I shot it two hours ago. I was checking InfoWars.com, and I saw comments going, you know, one minute ago, two minutes ago, damn, Alex is right. How did he predict this? How did he know this? It's on fire. They're burning him out Waco style. And sure enough, that's what's happened. Now, that's a 95% chance they've burned him out. There's a 5% chance, because he's been trained by them, that just like he burned up his pickup truck, supposedly, mm -hmm. there's about a 5% chance he burned up the hostages inside or something and used that as a diversion to flee. So, uh, in fact, maybe it's a 10% chance, because I started, started thinking about that, uh, but it's totally surrounded. I don't know if he can get out of there. So that's why I'd say 90, 95% chance he is dead. He has been burned up. Because they know flashbangs, oh, they're saying a flashbang might have started it. Flashbangs don't start fires. They're not designed to. They can burn you if they land right on you. There have been cases of it going in a baby's crib through a window and giving them a little bit of a powder burn. Uh, this, this stinks to high heaven. The cla As I saw CNN and the, and the police commissioner of New York, the former police commissioner, going, oh, flashbangs start fires. And then the ammo makes it burn red like that. No, it doesn't. It's his ammo. Guns are bad. His ammo did it. Really? Oh, there's all those cops out there with guns to protect themselves. Checkpoints 20 miles away, aiming guns at people and their families. They don't do that when a regular killer's out killing people. They do it when the brotherhood gets killed. And that's what people don't like is that police are the new lower room of royalty. And then it's the politicians and the bureaucrats and above them, the foreign mega banks, the UN with diplomatic immunity. But I don't want to have a civil war with the cops. The, you know, the globalists are going to try to distract us. I don't want to have a civil war uh, with the cops. 
I want to get them to wake up that they're being screwed by the globalists as well and the crony anti-free market capitalism where, where the establishment picks the winners and losers. That's why I've been talking so much about how they're trying to stage a civil war. Now they're saying that. And now people are saying, go out and kill more cops. That creates an us against them mentality. And now the police have been militarized for a war with the people. We want them to go back to being peace officers. A military kills people and breaks things and occupies a nation. And then the people always become angry at the occupiers. And that's what's artificially trying to be staged to wreck America, because the globalists can't come in here and bring in total collectivism uh, overnight. They want to have a civil war to wreck it, and then on its ashes build their collectivist model where only the one-tenth of one percent are exempt and offshore. That's their big paradigm. David, this video of where I predicted this about two hours and ten minutes ago is coming up here, and I'll let you get back to the news. But what are your observations uh, about this whole thing? Well, I mean, uh, what's uh, shocking is, like you had stated earlier, that many people are supporting this individual. They're talking about his manifesto, how it's honorable, what he stated on Facebook. People saying, you know, keep on killing those pigs, keep on killing those pigs. So how people are spinning this, making this individual out to be a hero, is um, such an odd dynamic. But see, that's collectivism. You got Jamie Foxx saying white people are stupid and he's going to kill white people and it's funny. Uh, you've got Chris Rock saying Obama's our father. He never said that about Bush, who I didn't like, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm defending him. It's just it's so sick that he hated Bush, but now Obama's our father and we need to, quote, shut up and do what he says. And now it's a people against the police. Mm -hmm. And see, the cops have bought into that, especially in big cities and played into that and, and, and have been above the law. So now they're all guilty. But, but I mean, see how that group think works? Because, because he saw a cop, Dorner claims, kick su a suspect. He didn't go to the media. He, didn't, you know, he went to the corrupt system. They reportedly, if you believe it, I I'm sure somebody that's willing to shoot people's daughters to get at them, there's more to the story than what he claims in his manifesto. Y you know, if somebody wrongs me, I'm going to go after them. Okay? And I'm going to exhaust everything that's nonviolent first. That's just common sense, self-preservation. Mm -hmm. The fact that he would go after a daughter of a police captain and kill him, people are like, that's honorable, let's kill their families. What the hell? The law of war, the rules of war are you don't mess with people's family. You want to mess with me, you think I've done something, you want to come after me, do it. Leave my family out of it. And this is just insane. And, and then look, to look at the cops too, it shows their crazy culture in Southern California because they're some of the worst there uh, statistically from what we've seen. They shoot up two cars with a white guy in it. They stop and then shoot him up. Yeah. And they shoot up two women on a paper route, a different color truck, not even the same maker model, and they're shooting up other people. I mean, it shows a hysteria. What's your take on that? Well, it's going to be interesting to see also another uh, dynamic is what roles drones played in this because he was the first uh, civilian to be chased around by a drone. And supposedly these Which isn't really true. They use them in North Dakota on the yeah. on the rustlers, but yeah. The, but the media says that you're right. Right, right. So that's an interesting dynamic as well. Um, yeah, I mean, it, look, he's been cornered. There's. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what what turns out as a result. Exactly. That cabin was completely surrounded. That's why I'm saying it probably wasn't him torching it himself as a diversion to escape. Uh, if that's the case, he probably got shot trying to leave because they've got that thing surrounded by hundreds of uh, paramilitary trained SWAT teams. Mm -hmm. It's a turkey shoot. Um, and again, there is a one chance out of 100 that there was a mass murder by police. They're blaming it on Dorner. He's been dead for a week and a half in this cabin off-season that nobody would rented. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, again, I'm looking at past patterns, 1% chance of that. Maybe 4 or 5% chance uh, that, uh, you know, he's already escaped the cabin. This is a diversion. I give it a 95. He's dead right now, barbecued in there. Uh, because they've already lost. The one more cop got killed today in the shootout. Mm hmm so that's 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 uh, six people shot, four of them dead, mm -hmm. and that's what they do. And quite frankly, if I was police sent up there, I'm not going in there with some guy trained on the tactics who's going to sit there and cut me in half with you know 30 weapons he's got. All I, I, I mean, that's the tactics, burn them out. It's just that we've got to hear, oh, the flashbang did, or he burned himself up. Like, you know, and, and again, Waco's inexcusable because it's 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 it's. It's, oh my gosh, I said it. It's 17 little children under the age of 10. It was like 30 something people under the age of 18. Here's what just hit me. They reportedly had two hostages in there. Mm -hmm. They reportedly had two hostages in there, uh, but Dorner did. Let's pray to God that was a false report because I'm telling you, I know how the feds and the police work. They'd burn up two elderly people in a minute so they yeah, wouldn't he, have are to. Are you talking about the ones that he tied up? He tied up two hostages, took their car, and then drove off? 
Yeah, but now they're saying he may have had them there, though. Oh, okay. But, I mean, no one knows. That's what I'm saying. Different reports. But I'm telling you, if they'd kill 17 little kids, 10 of them under the age of 2. I mean, babies. Mm -hmm. uh, 17 under the age of 10. At Waco. I mean, they would burn up a house with Randy Weaver. They got caught trying to do it. I mean, it just shows that now in a real police force or more rural areas, you've seen stuff happen where cops charge in and get killed trying to save a family. Or you saw the old you know, Austin cops go up the tower with a citizen and shoot the tower shooter. You know, in the old days, you have peace officers on average that were better. They were willing to die to help people. They signed on to be real heroes, to be real warriors for, you know, for the tribe. It's just that if you look at Waco, that's why patriots and military got so upset. They, they did infantry tactics. There's footage of the flare of them shooting people trying to get out. They went in and planted a bomb on the church records vault area where everybody was hiding in the concrete structure within and killed those people. So they built that big wooden compound over a concrete building. And ben, General Parton exposed it all, how they put a bomb on it and it showed them before they tore it down and hauled it all off to cover it up. You, you know, the photos from the congressional hearing where they put the place, the, uh, the shape charge. So I'm telling you, uh, if there were hostages in there and, the, and, and they burned them up, you'll never be told. They'll say Dorner did it. They won't even say a flashbang did it. It's very hard. A flashbang would have to pretty much hit gasoline for it to do what they're talking about. Uh, so... I've just thrown out here real scenarios. That's what I do. I tell you what I'm really thinking, not what I want to believe, not what statistically could be even, what I know from deep research. And uh, we're going to, I guess, uh, let you get back to the news. Yeah, we're going to go to your video right now. Let's go to that uh, powerful rant that, ac that Alex recently posted on YouTube. A prediction two hours ago. A prediction. Here it is. The Chris Dorner fiasco appears to be coming to a head. Alex Jones with Infowars.com news alert. We were just in here watching CNN. They claim that they've cornered him in some house. There's been some type of shootout uh, in Big Bear, California, up in the snow-capped mountains. The issue here, though, is that now CNN especially refuses to show live footage and is just telling us what they're seeing from the helicopter. In the past, this was never done except for situations like Waco, where they ordered the news cameras back and then the place blew up in flames. He's reportedly got several hostages inside there. Uh, what the police tend to do and the military tends to do in a situation like this where they've lost some of their own, they don't care about 17 little children uh, under the age of 10 in the Waco compound. They, they blew it up and burned it to the ground. And I hope that doesn't happen here. But regardless, this is why people don't believe official stories. It's because over and over again, we're going to play the clip in a moment, the establishment media is caught lying about things, spinning things, and then not letting us see what's really happening. A few weeks ago at a shooting in Houston at a community college, they cut the feed. And we're saying different things than what we were watching on local uh, Texas television with live feeds. They kept showing the scariest footage over and over again. They also do that to, to control the narrative and what's put out. But here's the bottom line. We have our guns because of government people like the alleged killer Chris Dorner that go crazy. When the government has all the guns, there's tyranny. When the people have the guns, there is liberty. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. When the people fear the government, there is tyranny. That's Thomas Jefferson. It's common sense. But let's go ahead and show you uh, this clip. And again, uh, they're still saying earlier. Commissioner, it's uh, Wolf Blitzer. Uh, we're watching what's going on here in the Situation Room as well. Uh, we are now showing our viewers videotape of the aerial uh, area after a law enforcement asked us not, no longer to show live pictures because that could help the suspect in this particular case uh, potentially escape. So what, we're, what, what our viewers now are seeing is videotape. We're no longer going to show the live pictures. Uh, because we were asked uh, to do so, I right. could endanger this. Right, that's good. So now, in any case, oh, the government's going to have drones and surveillance and all this, but you can't see because it might help the suspect. It might give him a bird's eye view that they don't want him to have. Okay? That's what's going on here. Now, obviously, they could just simply cut the power to the house, but they, they want to tell you, hey, don't let the public see it because of what he might see. Well, they don't want us to see it either. And it's more of this where the government's totally secret and we're totally transparent. That's 
ass backwards from how our constitutional republic is supposed to work. We'll continue to watch this throughout the evening. We'll have more for you at 7 o'clock Central at InfoWarsNews.com with the nightly news. 7 o'clock every night. It's $5.95 a month to get a membership, 11 memberships for $5.95. You can share the username and passcode with 11 people. That way you can see real uncensored news. If you want to see it tonight, 7 o'clock. InfoWars nightly news. If not, it'll be posted tomorrow for everybody at InfoWars.com. We'll cover it, obviously, on the radio, 11 a.m. Central tomorrow. And more updates are coming. Alex Jones signing off for now. Very powerful insight by Alex, and Alex is going to talk about this issue at length tomorrow on his radio show, so tune in for that. Now, in other news, speaking of former military Soldiers, Chris Kyle's funeral took place in Dallas. It started off at Dallas Cowboys Stadium in Dallas. And uh, 7,000 people were at the funeral. It was a lot of heartfelt words were said about the former soldier who is called America's greatest sniper. And there was a procession, a procession that came all the way to Austin, Texas, about a 200-mile procession. And it ended at Texas State Cemetery in Austin where Mr. Kyle was buried and our very own reporters melissa melton aaron dykes and rob jacobson one of our editors went there to see what occurred to get a frontline view of the procession so let's just go to that story right now i'm melissa melton reporting for the infowars nightly news we've just seen the funeral procession move through on i-35 for ex-navy seal chris kyle the highway was completely shut down on the southbound lane. The northbound lane was completely clogged with traffic. All cars were diverted off the side of the road. The bridge was taken over by fire department and police. We even saw two police helicopters fly over as the procession went through. We have a media set up back here on the east side. I'm going to have to ask you to move over. How far away is the east side? Uh, just walk over here and uh, just walk down the sidewalk right down there. You'll all see right. where all the media is. I'm blocking the entrance right here? Yes, sir. Why is that? Because this area is held for the family, and uh, we have other vehicles coming in and There's not a public area right here. Right. Sir, I'm asking you to move to the other side. That's where the media is set up at. A very, very sad turn of events, and again, Mr. Kyle was considered the deadliest sniper in the history of the U.S. military. His book was a New York Times bestseller. It was called American Sniper, and however you feel about the wars that Mr. Kyle fought in, he was a father, he was a husband, so our condolences to his family. Now, in other news, it seems that North Korea continues to saber-rattle 
They took some time off, but once again, their leader now is saber rattling. And earlier today, they tested a nuclear, they, they conducted a nuclear test, and a large tremor was measured at 4.9. As a result, U.S. military officials are saying that North Korea is a threat and they have to be handled. We currently have many sanctions against North Korea. However, this is, you know, military officials are condemning the actions as well as China. And President Barack Obama, who has his State of the Union speech in just a couple of minutes, condemned the actions as well, the fact that they conducted a nuclear test. Now, North Korea is not a threat to the United States, but if they continue to uh, saber rattle, they can involve South Korea, and uh, things can get messy out there. So uh, we obviously hope that this doesn't continue. But uh, our U.S. military officials are going to use this to um, intervene in the matter and Possibly this could create a regional war if this continues in that neck of the woods. Now, in domestic news and in our Infowars.com website, an article by our very own Steve Watson, the headline reads, Man sues TSA for $5 million following peanut butter arrest. According to the article, an Arizona man who was arrested at the behest of the TSA following a wisecrack over a jar of peanut butter is suing the federal agency for $5 million. Yay. Frank Hannibal, 50, was detained and dragged from LaGuardia Airport recently by police after a run-in with TSA agents over the jar of gourmet sandwich spread. The article says Hannibal um, commented when he was trying to go through a metal detector and he was stopped because of the peanut butter. He commented to his wife and children, quote, they're looking to confiscate my explosives. As a TSA agent was looking at the matter and TSA screener Edwin Sanchez overheard Hannibal's remark. He did not see the funny side and immediately called the cops. And as a result, Mr. Sanchez had him arrested because, uh, you know, you're not allowed to uh, make a wisecrack to TSA agents. Uh, as a result, Mr. Hannibal was sent to jail for 24 hours in a cell, and they actually fed him uh, peanut butter sandwiches during that period. We wish him the best of luck with his $5 million lawsuit. It seems that you can't even make wisecracks to TSA agents anymore. They deem that a threat. And this happened at LaGuardia Airport, where I had my run-in with TSA agents as well during the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. You can see that run-in on PrisonPlanet.tv in the special reports section. And... Um, on the video, you'll see that a lady says that she went through the same scenario with her yogurt. She went through the metal detectors and the TSA agents made her and her daughter throw it away because they said the yogurt could be dangerous. And uh, she was obviously very frustrated as well. So that's what they do. An agency that costs $8 billion annually, they haven't caught one terrorist, yet they're hassling people over peanut butter. So we hope that Mr. Hannibal wins his lawsuit because it will send a strong message to the TSA agents that if you mess around with the American public, we can sue you. So best of luck with his lawsuit. And in other news, more uplifting news, it seems that the state of North Dakota has signed a bill, at least in the Senate, that would make abortion illegal in their state. And if a crime is committed towards a pregnant woman and she loses the child as a result of it, there will be harsher criminal penalties as a result as well. Now, if this passes in North Dakota's House as expected, there will be a referendum held in 2014 where the public will be able to strike down pro-abortion laws. And they say that it's very likely it will happen. And the more important thing is North Dakota would be the first state in the union to do that. The bigger picture would be if they pass this law, that's a pro-life amendment, other states will follow. And quite possibly the Supreme Court might hear the issue again as well. Anton Scalia, Supreme Court justice, says that if many states follow suit, it's very likely that the Supreme Court will hear the issue again, and maybe they will overturn Roe versus Wade. Over 70% of Americans are, uh, do not want to see abortions in the third trimester. Over 50% of Americans are against abortions in the second and third trimester. And it's my opinion that if people actually saw an abortion taking place, pro-choice support would drop by 15% within one year because people would see how barbaric it is. So we wish the state of North Dakota well. Once again, now the House is going to take up the issue, and if it passes in the House, an amendment, a referendum will be held in 2014 to strike down abortion in the state of North Dakota.
Now, as I stated earlier, President Barack Obama is going to have his State of the Union speech, yippee, in just a couple minutes. So we're going to go to our daily quote, and it's by none other than Barack Obama. And it says this, all nations must come together to build a stronger global regime. I'll say that again, all nations must come together to build a stronger global regime. Obviously, Barack Obama, just like his predecessor, George Bush, was a globalist, and they didn't have a strong uh, love for the Constitution, nor for our nation's sovereignty. Now, in just a minute, we're going to go to a commercial, but in just a minute, we're going to come back. I conducted an interview earlier with a pastor by the name of Stephen Broaden. He's the founder of Con the Constitutional Defenders of Texas, a very patriotic organization. He's going to talk a little bit about their, his organization as well as the current state of black America. February is Black History Month, so stay tuned for that interview. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Fellow freedom lovers, Alex Jones here with the biggest contest announcement we've ever made. This is so incredibly exciting. We are launching Operation Paul Revere. What did Paul Revere do? He rode through the countryside in New England saying to arms to arms, the Redcoats are coming. One is by land, two is by sea. And all that evil men and tyrants need to flourish is that good men and women do nothing. Let me officially announce Operation Paul Revere, a $100,000 cash first place winner to be judged by yours truly, Alex Jones. The film can be three minutes, it can be up to two hours. It can be fiction, nonfiction, documentary, drama. It's got to promote liberty and freedom and expose tyranny and oppression. And it's not just people in the U.S. that can enter. It's folks worldwide. The rules, the details are at Infowars.com forward slash contest. You have to read the rules and officially sign up for this because it's a $100,000 prize first place, $10,000 second place, $5,000 third place. But just as I did last year with a reporter contest, we are going to crowdsource from the pool of incredible talent out there and hire several official crews to be directors and writers and camera people in Infowars.com produced major films and documentaries that will be put in movie theaters and on cable. And I've got all the connections to get it done. Together, we're going to really give the New World Order hell. This is extremely exciting. I've made over 20 films. One of them alone has reached more than 40 million people on YouTube and Google Video. The Obama Deception, Endgame, Fall of the Republic, Road to Tyranny. Films are the most effective thing I do, but they're very time consuming. And so I want to turn the power of We the People loose here. And your art, your research, your ideas are unstoppable. We're officially kicking the contest off this Friday. And you've got a little more than three months until April 30th. Just a little more than three months to produce your documentary or your film and get it out. And it will absolutely reach tens of millions of people. Our normal contest get about 500 entries. That's what $10,000 prizes. This is 10 times that, 100,000 for first place. That's one of the biggest contests out there. In fact, it's the biggest next to Doritos that has $100,000. This is huge, ladies and gentlemen, $115,000 in cash prizes and a shot to have your film produced and financed by Infowars.com. Edit it, upload it to YouTube and one other alternate public video site and send your entry to Paul Revere at Infowars.com. The animating contest of liberty that Thomas Jefferson talked about is happening right now. The modern battlefield is in the mind more than ever. We use truth. The globalists use lies and deception. The corruption and oppression and high-tech police state is in our face. But the controllers are scared. They intended to use the internet to dominate and control humanity and surveil us. But we've turned their system against them. This is a historic crossroads that we have reached. And I ask you to ride in the year 2013, just as one of the founders of this republic did back in 1775. And I'm calling you to arms in the info war because the pen and the video camera is mightier than the sword. Let's go in there and rescue humanity 
and awaken them and set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. Be part of this contest. You've got three months. Put your hat in the ring. Be part of the solution to the corruption and oppression. Be part of the resistance to tyranny. We're looking for the Paul Revere's that will drive a stake through the New World Order's wicked heart. Pure is introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. This is the Pro One by Pro Pure. You wanted it, you got it. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it. And out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Alex Jones here with a message that could revolutionize health in this country. Going back about a year and a half ago, I began to learn about the incredible health effects of Longevity products. Aaron Dykes lost 92 pounds. We're going to show you some before and afters. Aaron, break down what happened, your story. I've worked really hard with diet and exercise to try to lose weight, but I just didn't get the results. It just didn't happen. Then I saw what you were doing with InfoWarsTeam.com. I wasn't even trying to lose weight, but I got it because I wanted to feel better energy. I wanted that nutrition. Didn't even understand how that could kickstart my own weight loss goals, but the products did that for me. I found myself suddenly losing weight, more energetic, wanting to exercise, wanting to eat the right foods. And they don't even advertise it as weight loss. I want to challenge our radio listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com. Sign up as a distributor and get wholesale pricing discounts at InfoWarsTeam.com. Welcome back. We are now joined by Pastor Stefan Broaden. He's the founder of a very interesting organization called the Constitutional Defenders of Texas. Sounds a major, amazingly patriotic. Pastor Broaden, thank you so much for joining us here on InfoWars Nightly News. Thanks for having me, Dave. Now, Pastor, before we talk a little bit about your organization, it is Black History Month. Um, tell us a little bit. You are a pastor as well. You do have a congregation. What is your take on the current state of black America? Uh, my take is that we're in a, a very negative situation right now. We have high unemployment, underemployment. The high school dropout rate among black boys is uh, through the roof. Um, abortion rate in the black community is at about 1,400 abortions a day. Uh, at the end of the day, when the sun goes down, uh, 1,400 black babies would have been snatched from their mother's womb. Um, we have a disconnect between our leadership and the needs of the community. The Congressional Black Caucus is not uh, representing the best interest of the community. The NAACP is not representing the best interest of the community. In fact, the NAACP is complicit 
with Planned Parenthood in their thrust into our community, unfettered access to our community with sophisticated marketing and, and slick advertisement. They have convinced black women that the, the best answer to unintended pregnancies is to destroy the child. This is having a deleterious impact on the demographics of our community. And, uh, and so the state of affairs in black America is in a sorry state. Now, uh, on average, we're nonpartisan here. We're libertarian, so we're neither a Republican nor Democrat. But on average, 95% of blacks vote for the Democratic Party. Um, you know, this is a party that supports abortion. Um, you know, even if they don't believe in it themselves, they think someone else has the right to uh, to have an abortion. And as a result, millions of black millions of black children have been murdered. This party supports socialism, um, gun control. Why is it that uh, African Americans run to the arms of the Democratic Party? Well, uh, and that's a very good question to ask during this month. Um, and I think there are a number of factors that are a contributing. Um, factor to why that is the case in, in black America today. Uh, there is a general perception in the community that the Democratic Party represents the little guy. And oftentimes the black community see themselves as being little and insignificant in the larger schemes of things in this country. And because they see that they have a champion in the Democratic Party, they have a tendency to lean that way. I think the Democratic Party has uh, exploited that and has maximized on uh, attempting to uh, meet the needs of the community through big government. And so there is a kind of allurement, a kind of a seduction in the message of the Democratic Party. Uh, whereas uh, other parties, independents and the Republican Party, speak of personal duty and responsibility, uh, speak of self-determination and, and pulling oneself up by uh, your bootstrap. That message juxtaposed to uh, the message of the Democratic Party, which is, I'll do everything for you. I'll meet all of your needs, your food needs, your housing needs, uh, your health care needs. I'll do everything to help you is a message that is that resonates I think with people far greater than the message of the Republican Party and and, and the Libertarian Party and and uh, independence now quickly what can be done because uh, we definitely want to touch on a couple things what can be done to change the perception of the black community to have them love liberty a little bit more when it comes to their political views well um, that's a tall order for me to answer I, I think I have some some ideas, uh, whether they are correct or not, is something that would have to be tested in the in the public square. But I think a, a large, in large part, it's it's about information and education. Information ask and answers the question: What's going on? We need to know what's happening in our community, have a more intimate involvement in the political process to understand the challenges that are facing our society and our culture uh, such that we can begin to move based upon what we know. Education asks and answers the question, why is this happening in our culture, in our society, in our community? Then we have an assessment as to the kinds of programs that are coming from the Democratic Party or coming from our government, what those programs are doing in our community, how they may be uh, negative or uh, adverse to our own ability to be self-determined um, and to be responsible for our own care and development as a community or as individuals as well. Uh, so there is a kind of information and education that needs to happen. I submit to you that that's not the case today because in many instances, the liberal media or the left-leaning media does not report to the community the information and the and the um, the education that is required for us to make informed actions. I think uh, it it was said that our constitution works best with an informed populace. Well, when we're not informed, we are 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 told anything. And that's what the Democratic Party is doing. They're selling us anything uh, with the hope that we can get something for nothing. And that's the worst thing that could ever happen to anyone is to receive something for nothing because they believe that they deserve to get it.
and that they don't have to do anything to get it. And that's what's happening right now in the black community. It can change, but it's going to take a concerted effort on the part of uh, the community itself, the conservatives within the community, and the community of conservatives across this nation, recognizing that there's a desperate need, a screaming need for us to reinsert ourselves into the community, the black community, the Hispanic community, and other minority communities with the message of liberty, with the message of personal duty and responsibility, and that we too can have access to the American dream if we work hard. Now, in the five minutes that we have left, tell us a little bit about your organization. It has a great name, the Constitutional Defenders of Texas. I, I get goosebumps when I hear that name. Constitutional Defenders of Texas is really an organization that is founded on the idea that the power of this government resides not in the three branches of the government, but rather resides in we, the people. I am convinced that the answer to uh, of the dilemma of the uh, situations that we're facing in Washington, D.C., comes from we the people. And I believe the Founding Fathers have given us a sort of a template on how we can respond to what we have determined, uh, when I say we, uh, we the people have determined to be unconstitutional acts. In the First Amendment, there are five platforms, as you well know. There are five ideas that are associated with, with the power that we have as we the people. First of all, it says Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or forbidding the free exercise thereof. Or abridge free speech or free press. Those are the first four platforms inside the First Amendment. Freedom of religion, the restriction of the federal government that uh, to keep it from um, encroaching upon our, our right to r religious freedom, the freedom of speech, and the freedom of press. Those are the four ideas, but there's a fifth one. And it is the fifth one, I believe, that, that birth uh, in us a responsibility to hold our government uh, feet to the fire, if you will, concerning our constitutional rights and our liberties that are handed down to us by God. And that is to peaceably assemble and to petition redress for grievances. That's an instrument that I think that we need to be exercising at this time. And so the constitutional defenders picked up on that fifth platform and recognized that we have a right to petition our government and demand redress. The word redress there means a remedy for a wrong or an ill that has been perpetrated against we the people. And so we have a right to demand redress. And I believe we're at a moment in, the, in our nation's history as we see the kind of rapid transformation that is taking place in our federal government through unconstitutional acts that are happening not only in the executive branch, but in the House of Congress and, and, and in the Supreme Court as well. All three branches of the government are involved in unconstitutional acts. Now, we, I got, I wanna, just, we, we got two minutes left. I, I want to I wanna make sure you talk about redress. So what does that mean? I mean, do, do we punish the Congress? I mean, OK, redress. Well, what exactly does that mean? Redress, as uh, I find it as being a remedy, as you look the word up, it is a remedy for a wrong or an ill that has been perpetrated against we the people. If the government is involved in unconstitutional act, let's take NDAA, for example, National Defense Authorization Act that violates the Fourth, Fifth, Sixth, and Seventh Amendments to the Constitution. We can demand or petition redress to nullify any unconstitutional acts that comes out of Washington, D.C., out of the executive branch, out of Congress, or out of the judiciary. We have that right to petition redress. Well, who do we petition? We petition our representatives. We petition them to uphold and fulfill their duty to protect and to defend the Constitution against foreign and domestic enemies. We hold their feet to the fire. And if we don't hold their feet to the fire, then they don't recognize or have an obligation to respond to any of our grievances if we don't demand redress. That's the first step, I believe, that we must take as we the people in order to protect the Constitution, to exercise our stewardship responsibility to do so. I believe we're at that moment right now, David, 
And it requires of us to do just that. And we're asking your viewers and your audience to join us by signing a petition petition that we have up on our website, constitutionaldefendersoftexas.com, and join us in our demand of redress for unconstitutional acts that are coming from all three branches of the government, especially out of the executive and especially out of the judiciary, where Justice Roberts um, uh, made a law out of Obamacare which went beyond his enumerated duty specified in the Constitution as to what the Supreme Court ought to be doing. And they should not be making law. Law is reserved for the House of Congress. Pastor, we've got 20 seconds left. Is there any, what last thing you would, would you like to say to the public? Uh, we need at this time to be sober and focused on recapturing and rescuing this republic from the cultural Marxists who are trying to take it over through what they call a fundamental change to America. Thank you so much, Pastor Broden. We really appreciate it, and best of luck with your organization. God bless. God bless. Pastor Broden, a true patriot. Well, that's all for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. And remember, if you like what we do here, you know, feel free to help us by becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. It's a very, very good website. You're going to get access to a lot of content. And for uh, less than $5 a month, you'll get access to uh, Alex's documentaries and high def. You'll be able to see his radio show as it occurs. And you'll be able to see the nightly news live as well. Well, that's all for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Ortiz. Thank you for joining us, and join us tomorrow evening for a live telecast at the same time, 7 p.m. Central. Good evening.